Hey YouTube, there's something special about the Red Wing 1907s that make them the best mock toes from Red, Wing, Red Wings, and that is the Stormwelt. Also, crepe soles, I don't really like those, but either way, you can't beat the smell of leather. Mm. What's up YouTube? It's Michael. Happy Friday. I hope you are having a relaxing day. I hope it's not too stressful and I hope you're like, hey, I'll just sit here and watch a video about boots. Way too big for your boots. You're never too big for the boot. You're getting way too big for your boots. You're never too big for the boot. The 1907s, in my opinion, are Red Wing's best heritage boots by far. I just, there's a lot of reasons that we'll go over it in this video, but I just want to say to you, I think you should get the 1907s if you're looking at a mock toe Red Wing. Without further ado, we will be talking about sizing and breaking in these boots because they are a beast. A storm welt or a Norwegian welt, or in this case, sometimes Red Wing says a Norwegian-like welt. So close enough. Then we'll talk about the actual specific reason the 1907s are the best coming down in price and quality and all these different things. I'll do a waterproof test where I stand in the water and I tell you how they did. And I will do all of this through a vlog I made with a very special man named Stridewise. This is the weirdest way of meeting someone. <laughs> I've known this guy for about eight minutes. This is Nick at Stridewise. My name's Nick from Stridewise.com. He's a nice guy. I went to his apartment. I saw his room. I saw his dog. I saw his bed. I saw him do a pistol squat. Whoa. Nice job, Nick. Really working on those legs, huh? I meant to say Nick at Stridewise, by the way. My name's Nick from Stridewise. And Nick took me to a place called Grown and Sewn in Manhattan which we will be traveling to in this vlog together. It's a lovely little spot. I think you would like it if you're watching this video. This is a health hazard. <laughs> without further ado, go. Okay, so first things first, sizing. I usually wear an eight in boots. I bought an eight in Red Wings and they fit perfect. The thing to say about Red Wings or really most leather boots is you want them when you first get them to fit snug, especially because the leather is gonna be super stiff and they will kind of conform and mold to your feet over time and get more comfortable and softer, but always go snug, not squished snug. You are not trying to expand these to your feet, you're trying to get them to mold to your feet. So snug is good, squished is bad. Same with jeans, never go too small thinking that they will get bigger. Hello. Yo, yo. I did a Pico video a while ago, it's too big for me, so we're gonna see if it fits Nick. Wow, this is torn to shreds. Yeah. You're gonna give me some subpar. Yep. Most from the 40s. Oh! Oh, wow. Can you... Does it button at all? There you go. How am I modeling? What, what I got right here? Wow, that actually looks pretty sweet. Thank you. Where did you get it from again? eBay. It's from World War II. Is it actually from World War II? Yeah. So before we get into the break-in process, we need to talk about the leather very quick. These are the 1907s in Copper Rough and Tough, which is an oil and waxed nubuck leather. And you may be thinking, Michael, I don't know what nubuck is. Well, that's fine. I'll tell you. If you're familiar with leather, you know one side of it is smooth, the other side of it is kind of fuzzy, has this little nappy texture to it. Nubuck is when you take that smooth side and you sand it down a little bit, you get nubuck. Suede is when you flip it the other way and you shave down that nappy side, that is suede. If you don't shave it at all and you have the nappy side on the outside, that's rough out. Nubuck is tougher than suede. Rough out is basically tougher than everything. So the leather is waxed and oiled to make it tougher and water resistant, which will be good because we're doing a waterproof test later. Can't wait for that. Keep up with the okay, so it's like committing to a brand even if they don't actually have the right fit for you. Look at, this is a bag that I want. This is a 20, 20 ounce canvas, this one. So it feels seems a lot, like this is like, this is 14 ounces. Yeah. This is 20 ounces. You are unlikely to ever find canvas as thick as this. It's got nice thick bottom here. They have one in camo that I really want. Nick doesn't think that's a good move. No. Why? I'm not. <laughs> it's stolen valor, that's why. Not true. Okay, so now before we get into the best and most fascinating part of this video, the welt. We're just gonna go over the break-in process really quick. These are some heavy boots, some heavy A boots. Basically, every person that talks about Red Wing mock toes says, yeah, good luck breaking those in, pucko. You can, if you want to, try and speed them up. You can add a little bit of mink oil or some type of conditioner to them and walk in them. But to me, honestly, there's a, I have a certain pride in just walking 
in boots that are really uncomfortable to like get comfortable. To me, it's kind of like if I was a cowboy in the South and I saw a horse that I really wanted to ride, but it was wild. And every day I just kept getting on top of it and getting bucked off until the horse liked me. That's kind of what it feels like to wear Red Wings and break them in. I will say though, I don't think I'm that good at breaking in boots yet. Denim, on the other hand, I could break a cast in. It is Red Wing shoes. We are Red Wing so hard. What's cool about Red Wing Soho is that uh, it's also run by these guys that own Grown and Sewn, which is like a very, very, very little heritage fashion brand that more people should know about. Nick, uh, what is that? It's canvas that fades like denim. It's honeycombing on canvas. You're kidding. It's ridiculous. This is this is Gordon Stone's invention. This is what they're famous for. <laughs> I think I'm gonna buy that hat right next to you. This one? I really like that. Yeah. What does NY stand for? Before we get into why this boot is the best deal and all of that, you need to get into the welt. Welt, 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 if it isn't Walt Disney. Hello, I just want to preface this by saying my boot knowledge is not anything insane, but I'm sure some of you in the comments have insane boot knowledge. So if you comment about the difference between a Goodyear welt and a Storm welt or a Norwegian welt, it's a great comment. I will pin it to the top of this video so other people can read it and it will be great. So now if you will grant me the time, I will fumble through explaining to you what a Goodyear welt is and then tell you what a storm welt is. Okay, so very quickly, when you're looking at a boot, you have the upper, the insole, and then you have the outsole. You saw I was holding a boot before, now pretend that I'm still holding it. It's just easier for me to go like this. So a basic boot without a welt has the upper, then some glue or cement or anything like that. The insole is glued like that, and then once that is together, you take the outsole and you glue that on as well and that is a boot. They can't be resold and the cement could come undone and it could flap. So to remedy that, instead of using cement to put the outsole on, we can use a stitch and stitch right through the boot like this and that would be called a Blake stitch. But it's not really water resistant at all because threads basically just channel water right into it. So if that stitch goes all the way through the boot and then water comes and touches that thread, you basically have holes in the boot or the shoe or anything like that. So then logically we have to introduce something that remedies that issue and that's called a welt. This is a Goodyear welt, not a storm welt yet, but this is how a Goodyear welt works. So we have our upper and then we have our insole. Now instead of just stopping there and slapping the outsole on, there is now a thin leather strip tracing the outside of the bottom of the boot. And that is horizontally or kind of diagonally stitched to the upper on the inside rim of that leather strip. So if we're looking at this fake boot, there is now a little lip on the outside with no stitching around it. And on the inside of that little lip, there is stitching. So then what happens is when you take that outsole and you put it against the upper, it comes in contact with the welt. Now the outside of that welt, like I said, is a lip. So you stitch down the outside of the welt and connect the outsole to the upper that way. So the connection between the insole and the upper are hidden inside the welt. And the outside of the welt is holding on to the outsole. So that vulnerable area between the insole and the upper and the outsole is hidden basically behind the welt. So water and other elements can't get in as easily. Now, when you look at a pair of Red Wing 875s, those are Goodyear welted. And Goodyear welts are incredible. They are really durable. They are pretty water resistant. And since now there is that little leather strip, which is the welt, you have a little bit of space where you can put cork that will mold to your foot over time, which is what are in Red Wings, cork insoles. Or also you can put insulation there and keep your feet warmer. Then though, we have the storm welt a bit more sophisticated, a bit more, how you say, ingenuitive. So I'll say what kind of the popular consensus is that Red Wing is doing, and then I'll describe a Norwegian welt because I think it's so cool. So the boring thing and the popular consensus that I've seen, at least on Reddit in some forums, is that um, the storm welt for Red Wings on these 1907s isn't that complex, and it's basically Red Wing stitching another strip of leather onto the welt itself. So now it's too thick and 
more secure. And apparently that has similar effects as a storm welt or a Norwegian welt. That's why they say Norwegian-like. They could kind of bend the welt up a little bit. I'm not quite sure, but the popular thing that I've seen is that it's just another piece of leather. Okay, so now here's the cool thing. This is the Norwegian welt. Yuka 10 actually has a really good description of what a Norwegian welt is, and they have really cool boots. So I really want a pair from them. Okay, so picture a boot. This one, for example. Most boots you see this upper, that leather curves inwards like this and it curves under the insole of the boot and kind of wraps around under like that. And then when you take the welt, that part that's curved under gets the welt on it around here, around the outside. So basically what happens is you have that curve under, you have the welt, and what you see here is a small channel where water can kind of flow in. Not saying that it does regularly or anything like that, but the possibility is there. It is not perfectly waterproof or anything like that. What I read from the Norwegian welt is the upper, instead of curving in like this, goes like this. This is the upper, it curves in like this, and then it comes back out like this, and it's folded outwards. So when the welt goes on, a stitch is now there, and it basically takes away that channel and puts it like this so water will just kind of run off of it like a gutter. And that's why when you look at a boot like this, it looks like there are two pieces of leather. One is kind of like bent up and coming out, the other is the regular welt sandwiched down. So you'll see the double stitching again. Check the comments. This makes me think of a time in high school, I was in math class and I was sitting next to like the superstar athlete of my high school and he was absent for a few days and he said, what do we go over? And I said, oh, actually, it's so easy. I found out a way to do it super fast and I told him how to do this the wrong way and then we both failed a math test. I have a pair of these, Country. which is like, I think it's a, it's called slate, slate. which is a remarkably street wear look for, for Red Wing, I think, like the contrast sure. stitching and everything. So I found myself wearing these with shorts a couple times this summer and I, I didn't hate it. Ah, this looks pretty good on you. Is it too, is it too tight? No, you do look like Superman though. Down to commas. So the 1907s are $10 more expensive than the 875s Theoretically, not really, and this is my TED talk, so get ready, I'll prove it to you now. The 1907s come with Red Wing's inner leather foot bed, which typically you can get separately for $40. These actually serve another function too. If your feet are sweating throughout the day, you can pull these out at the end of the day, and that will help the rest of the boots dry faster, and you can let the foot beds dry on their own. Like I said before, you get the storm welt, which, you know, to me is invaluable. And you also get a pair of leather laces thrown in for free with these boots that are typically $15. All in all, for that extra $10, you get $55 of freebies thrown in, technically 45 because you paid an extra 10, but it just seems like a better deal to me. You could even, if you just wanted to get a pair of leather laces, you're already technically saving $5. I'm gonna be punching. See ya. Bye. <laughs> See? Dexter? Goodbye. Nickus Drivewise? Goodbye. I give you a pleasure. princess handshake. <laughs> Getting Brendan's initial reaction to my new boot purchase. Opening words? Uh, sturdy. Hello, it is time. The best part of this video, we are going to see how waterproof these are. I did not have high hopes for these boots, I will say. In my head, I was kind of comparing them to Bluntstones, which like I said, are injection molded. So the leather is actually kind of binded with the rubber of the outsoles. So those do really well. I can stand in water for a very long time and water doesn't come in. They were going against a big player. Also, I hope I didn't say Redstones at all in this video because in my head, I was like, oh, don't say Redstones. This isn't Minecraft, am I right? Okay, here we go. Boot test number one. I will also be filming on my iPhone. So before we're at the Mokto line, this is just the welt line. This boot's fully submerged, this boot's not. This boot's leaking already, but this one's not. But this one, it's all coming in right over here. Seems like just the right boot's leaking. The left one is dry as a bone. Okay, and now the left one. These boots leaked almost immediately. 
which was a little bit of a letdown, but only one boot leaked almost immediately, and that was the right one. One of the stitches, or a few of the stitches, the hole is pretty big, and then the threads are waxed so water doesn't get through them, but that's never perfect. But one of the holes I feel like was a little bit bigger, or the waxing wasn't perfect, or something like that. So that was kind of a shame, but I have no doubt if it's raining, or if you were just walking through grass or mud or anything like that, these boots would hold up fine. Either way, though, that was Stridewise, that was me, that was Grown and Sewn, that was Red Wings. That is about it. I'll see you next week where it's almost fall. So it's time to talk about some of my favorite fall jackets. Thank you.